So I've been working and developing mobile applications for the past seven or eight years now. Over the years, I've used Flutter to develop a ton of different applications for both my personal projects that I've released on iOS and Android App Store, as well as commercial projects that I've worked with other people to create and release for companies worldwide. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you guys my ideal setup when it comes to developing mobile applications using Flutter for Visual Studio Code. I'll be showing to you guys the extensions that I use, what are the themes that I use, some other settings that I've set up within Visual Studio Code to ease and simplify my development experience and allow me to rapidly prototype, develop, test, and debug my applications and ship them to the end user as fast as possible. I'll be sprinkling tips and tricks throughout this video for awesome tools that you can use that are definitely going to help you 10x your development productivity, so don't skip anything. And as always, if you're enjoying the content thus far, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. So for those of you that are new to the channel and maybe have pondered upon this video, I'd like to quickly give you an introduction to Flutter. And you could think of Flutter as an actual development framework that allows us to build beautiful mobile web and desktop applications using a single code base and then deploy them on these platforms natively. So that's pretty much all you need to know about Flutter. So with that said, let's get into Visual Studio Code and let's see what settings I have. For those of you wondering which project I've actually opened within Visual Studio Code, this is a recently released tutorial on the channel for RiverPod. So if you're interested in learning about RiverPod state management, link to that video will be down in the description as well. So firstly, let's talk about the main thing that you're seeing here, and that is that my dot code has syntax highlighting on it, and I can actually debug the code as well by clicking on these icons. So what extensions have I installed in Visual Studio Code that are allowing me to do that? There are primarily three extensions that I use in tandem with Visual Studio Code to allow me to have this functionality of being able to debug my code, test it on different devices, as well as have IntelliSense and then syntax highlighting. So the first extension is called the Dart, and as you can see, it's released by Dart Code org and it basically allows us to add dart language support to visual studio code as well as a debugger so that we can debug our dart code so if you want to install any of these extensions what you can do is come to the extensions tab and you can do command shift x on mac that's the actual shortcut for opening the extensions tab or you can open up extensions and then basically search whatever the name of the extension is so in this case it's dart and then you'll be able to see it click on it and install it like you can see so this was the first extension that I used. Besides this, I also use the official Flutter extension. This is also provided to us by the same organization called dartcode.org. And this basically allows us to add Flutter support to Visual Studio Code. So now we are able to write Flutter code that we are also able to then debug using Visual Studio Code and run this code on different targets. So before I talk about my final extension, let me show you something very cool. If I am going to be developing a Flutter application usually, and it doesn't pertain to me actually showing you guys a tutorial, I usually use shortcuts to generate these different boilerplate code for the different widgets or structures that we might have in a Flutter application, such as, for example, creating a stateful widget. So one way you could do it is go through the tedious process of writing everything by yourself of what the scaffold or the basic shell of a stateful widget is. But if you install this extension, which is Flutter Widget Snippets, and it's created by Alexis Villegas Torres, it gives you a set of helpful widget snippets that you can use for your day-to-day -day Flutter app development. For example, if I quickly want to, if I have this extension enabled, create a stateful widget, all I have to do is basically come within the file wherever I'd like to create the stateful widget, and then type in STF, this stands for this, and the actual extension that's going to allow me to then create the actual structure of a Flutter stateful widget. I just press enter and there we go. Now we have the actual stateful widget code created. And now I can name the actual widget whatever I'd like. So I can, for example, call it ABC page. Couldn't come up with a better name. And there we go. With this, I have quickly created a stateful widget class and the corresponding state class for it. Besides this, you can quickly create a stateless widget as well doing STL. There you go. Now we have a stateless widget created. And there are a bunch of different widget snippets that you can actually take a look at here to ease your development process. For example, you want to create a column. So you can do F call. And then as you can see, there we go. We've now created a column. You can do F row. And now we've created a row. So to learn more about all of the different widget snippets that are available to you, you can actually come to the actual extensions page, type in Flutter widget snippets, and make Make sure that it's by Alexis Villegas Torres. It has a million plus downloads, so a lot of developers use it. And then you can actually take a look at 
down in the description all of the different snippets that it allows you to create. So you can quickly create a scaffold. You can create, for example, a text widget by doing F text. So I highly recommend this extension if you're remotely interested with building any kind of applications using Flutter because this is going to make your life a whole lot easier. So with that done, let's move on to the next extension that I'd like to talk about. Usually when we're working with building mobile applications, there's going to come a point where we'll have to ingest some data. And usually this data is in the form of JSON. So another extension that I use on a daily basis is called JSON and it's given to us by Mozilla.com. And this plugin makes it very easy for us to work with JSON files within our actual projects. It allows us to beautify our JSON and that's going to make it easy for us to understand what the structure of our JSON JSON is and what are the different parts of it and what comes together to constitute the complete JSON that we're seeing. So I highly recommend this extension as well. Besides this, you guys might be wondering that whenever I am building my applications within Visual Studio Code, you see these beautiful icons for all of the folders that I have. And a lot of people ask me these questions. They were saying, what icon package have you installed within Visual Studio Code that's giving you these beautiful icons for both the files as well as the folders that we are seeing? Well, for that, I'm going to reveal the secret to you today. I actually use a package called Material Icon Theme by Philip Keefe, and you can visit his website as well. And this basically adds support for material design icons to Visual Studio Code. So to show you what the default icons for Visual Studio Code are, what I'm going to do is basically disable this extension. And once it's disabled, I'm going to close down Visual Studio Code and then open it up again. So as you can see, with the extension disabled, now none of the folders have these cool icons associated with them and the actual icons for these files are also kind of bland. So if I unable this extension, then you're going to see that all of these folders get these really beautiful icons given to them, as well as the files have much more poppy and colorful um, actual icons. And this is just a personal preference that I have. I usually like to have some color in the actual ID that I'm working with. So I know this might not be the perfect for everybody, but a lot of people ask me about these icons that I have. So I decided to show that in this video and hopefully you guys find this cool and decide to install this material icon theme or become inspired by these actual icons and maybe install a different icon theme because Visual Studio Code has a ton of different icon themes published by a ton of different people. So this extension is another extension that I recommend and it's very cool. Another thing that I'd like to quickly mention is that a lot of you might not know this, but Visual Studio Code is actually an open source project. And you can see the complete source code for Visual Studio Code on GitHub. So if you just come on to Google and then type VS Code GitHub, you're going to be seeing that Microsoft is actually open sourced all of the code for the actual Visual Studio Code editor. But one thing that I'd like to quickly mention is that if you download Visual Studio Code, some people do not like the fact that it has Microsoft branding. I do not know, but some people don't like that. And that it actually takes some analytics information from the actual system that it's running on and then shares this with actually Microsoft staff that use it to improve their actual product or maybe some people think spy upon them. So what the community has done to actually mitigate this issue is take this Visual Studio Code repository and then create a fork of it called VS Codium. And it's exactly the same as Visual Studio Code. The only difference is that VS Codium is a community driven freely licensed binary distribution of Microsoft's VS Code editor. And you could think of VS Codium as the same code editor as Visual Studio Code. The only difference is that it has all of that analytics reporting functionality stripped out, as well as all of the Microsoft branding stripped out. And now it's packaged up into another package that's called Visual Studio Code, which I also have installed on my system. And I usually use this as another text editor that I open on the site while I'm teaching you guys how to build something and then see my reference code within this while I actually show you how to build the application within Visual Studio Code. So this is another excellent project that I've been using for a very long time. So I definitely wanted to give them a shout out within this video. So if you're looking for a free Libre open source software binary for Visual Studio Code, then this is another excellent choice that you can take a look at. And then the final extension that I'd like to talk about is called Thunder Client. And you could think of Thunder Client as an actual REST API client that lives within Visual Studio Code. So I've been using Postman for a very long time. And Postman is an actual dedicated application that you can install on your system and it allows you to interact with different APIs in a sandboxed environment and test to see how to work with them. 
Tundra Client is basically like Postman, but the benefit of it is that it lives directly within Visual Studio Code. So once you install this extension, what basically happens is that on the left sidebar, you basically have the ability to open up Tundra Client. You can also use Command Shift R on Mac to open the Tundra Client up, and then you can basically use this client to interact with the different REST APIs that you work with on a daily basis. For example, as an example here, I've created a GET request to the dummyjson.com endpoint for products, and I've specified some query parameters, and then I can send this request and see how the server processes it, what type of a response that I get, and then I can use this information in whatever way I need to use it to help me better develop the applications that I am developing. So when it comes to building mobile applications, most of the time when we are going to be loading data in from an external resource, it's either going to be us using some kind of a REST API or a GraphQL-based system. So if you're using a REST API, API-based system, then Tundra Client is an excellent extension that I recommend because it's going to make it very easy for you to work with the REST API, understand how to work with it in an actual sandboxed environment, see what kind of response that you get, and kind of develop an intuition and understanding of what the API is, how to work with it, and then you can actually write the code that you need to write within Flutter or whatever other actual framework you use to develop your applications and then code that logic within that to actually interact with the REST API. So Tundra Client is another cool extension that I highly recommend. And they also have a website which is called thunderclient.com. So I highly recommend Tundra Client as well. So these are pretty much all of the extensions that I use when it comes to developing Flutter applications. I sometimes also do web development work and Python related development, but the extensions for those I'm not going to be sharing in this video. If you're interested in learning more about those, leave a comment down below letting me know and I'll try to create a video on that. But one final question that I'd like to address is maybe the people might be interested in, hey, Hosen, what type of a theme you're using? So you might be amazed to hear this, but I don't have any kind of custom theme installed within Visual Studio Code. The theme that I use, even though I've changed it, is something that comes by default when you install Visual Studio Code. So my theme is called Dark Plus, and to change the actual theme for Visual Studio Code, you can go within Settings, Theme, and then whatever the color theme option is. And then from here, you can select the theme that you'd like. So I usually use the Dark Dark Plus theme, this is the theme that I prefer using, and it's something that's easy on my eyes. I like the actual syntax highlighting colors, and I like the way it looks, so I basically prefer using it, but I know that some developers like very fancy color schemes, such as purple, green, blue, things like that, especially NeoWim developers, that they go real crazy with setting up NeoWim and adding a bunch of different crazy themes within it. But I'm a man of simple tastes, I just use the Dark Plus theme. So there you go, if somebody's interested in knowing the theme that I use, then it's Dark Plus. So with that, that pretty much concludes all of the things that relate to Visual Studio Code that I use on a daily basis when it comes to developing Flutter applications. I have a whole bunch of other tools that I use that are installed on my system outside of Visual Studio Code on a daily basis when it, when it comes to developing software applications. So if you guys are actually interested in learning more about what my complete software development environment looks like on my actual system, then leave a comment down below letting me know and I'll try to create a video at that and showcase to you guys some of the cool tools that I use outside of the scope of Visual Studio Code that help me in my day-to-day -day development. So with that, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed the video and as always, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. And with that, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.